What's up geeks, welcome back. I know, it's been a while, and it's been quiet over here, but hey, I'm back, and this time I'm going to be making Eria from Final Fantasy VIII. She has been in my to-do list since forever, so let's do it! As base I'm going to use this poison ivy I got from a goodwill store, pretty cheap by the way. So let's start with the basics for doll customizing, removing hair, getting rid of the glue inside the head and erasing the factory painting using pure acetone. You know, all the basics. Once we have a clean canvas, we can start our doll. You know how much I love these DC girls. But, hmm, that smiles on their face, it bothers me for Edea. It would look so much better with a serious expression. Let me see. Smile? Don't smile? Yeah, definitely don't smile. So, I'm going to try something new for me, which is trying to erase the smile expression using Apoxy Sculpt. Partially molding a doll face was a first for me. So, I went really slow using tiny amounts of epoxy, always using water to keep the surface as smooth as possible until I got to that point where she no longer seems to smile. Yeah, she looked pretty badass right now. Using a very fine grit sandpaper, I'm going to make the transition from vinyl to epoxy as seamless as possible, and then we can match the colors. Since I don't own an airbrush yet, I use a very soft watercolor brush and I apply several layers to avoid visible brush strokes. Matching colors is not my stronger skill, but somehow I always get there. And now we are ready for the face up. And I really prefer her makeup in her 2D art. It looks so much dark and glamorous there than in the actual 3D model. I'm also going for that villainous anime style which you all know I love. Always start sketching the face with a light color, so if you make a mistake you can easily erase it and do it again. Also, I have to be extra careful because, since I'm working on an acrylic primate face, any mistake will end up in disaster, since I cannot use acetone to erase it, otherwise I will be ruining the color skin as well. I'm going to keep sketching all the details of her makeup and I'm going to start blushing all the dark areas using pastels. This repaint will use tons of pastels, so I had to seal the face so many times using MSD. This part is quite relaxing and I love it because it starts bringing your rock sketch to life, all the shadows and lights, so always take time to properly blush your repaints with pastels, it really makes a difference. Getting back to the watercolor pencils, I will start coloring the sketch. One of the pros of working on a previously acrylic prime face is that the pencils work so well on it. Let's start bringing to life those eyes of course, using a lighter color first. I never used black on my first attempt. Every time I seal the face, the pastel pigmentation fades a little bit, so every time I keep saturating it to bring those colors to the surface. Oh my god, she has such an amazing color palette on her face. And the time has come to finally use the black and start giving her that nice dark glamour she deserves.
I will start bringing some light to that design she has on both sides of her face. I really don't want to spoil anything if you haven't played the game, but Idea has a really interesting plot twist in this story. If you haven't played Final Fantasy VIII and you like RPGs, you really need to play this one as soon as possible, especially now that they released a totally remastered version some months ago. At this point the fence is pretty much set, we just need to keep adding details. Every artist can decide how much they will keep working on the face, so the point where one can say, hey, it's finished, is up to each one. I personally still want those dark colors to pop up a little bit more, and give the irises more depth. Also, I still need to add more details to the veins design. And with the cat's light, we can say the face up is now complete. Oh my god, she looks so beautiful. Moving on to the dress, I will use the old but effective technique of clean wrap and tape to make the patterns. This is a step by step tutorial. It's more for you guys to get an idea how I make these patterns. Each dress is like a different adventure, so I have to be creative every time. Once we have the patterns, we can transfer them to paper, and then to the actual fabric. Once I got all the pieces, I really wanted to go for accuracy, so I'm gonna try that gradient effect her dress has from dark to light. And first, I will wet the fabric using water, and then, with a very watered down acrylic paint, I will create the gradient. Once dry, it always fades, which is a good thing I guess, so now it's time to assemble the dress. This is a pretty basic dress base, so I just need to sew the sleeves and then close it on the sides, so I'm going to skip this part and make it off camera. I won't use the machine this time, so I'm completely hand sewing it. And here it is, it turned out really great, this pattern's technique really never fails. I'm going to use this black feather boa I got from my local craft store, and I cut a little piece and then I trim it because it was too fluffy, and then I will sew it like a color. And here it is, completely fabulous now. 
Enough of darkness and let's move on to the colorful part of her outfit, which is the headdress. I'm going to use my favorite material to build the headdress, which is my super light air dry clay set. I already made the cap for the head. I'm just going to start adding all those crazy details. And I have to say this, this design is crazy. Only a designer genius like Yoshitaka Amano commit this work. Such a dark dress and goth makeup wearing such a vibrant and colorful headpiece. It was really intimidating because it is so intricate, but I think it is what makes her so different from every other sorceress. She really has a unique fashion drama going on. Once all the different pieces are complete, I will hold them together using the best material for this. Of course, hot glue. It was really satisfying to watch all these beautiful pieces come into life, because when you put them together they actually make sense in a really unique way. And it's done. It looks so beautiful. It looks like candy. So cool. I was hesitant in the beginning to make that back ornament she has that looks like a giant fan and a curtain on her back, but some of my other fellow YouTubers encouraged me to do it, so I gave it a try using this clay cause it is really lightweighted. Literally, like foam. I was not 100% sure I was going to succeed, but somehow I accomplished it. Once it was dry, I noticed it was too flexible because yes, this clay remains flexible after fully cured, and I decided to give it some strength gluing on some strong wires on the back side. Sometimes while dot customizing we have to improvise and find quick solutions to unforeseen problems.
let's not forget to match her hands to the same color of her dress. And once the fan ornament is painted in full gold glory, let's add the two pieces of sheer fabric. And now we have the back ornament complete. I'm really happy I ended up making it. So we have the ornament, the dress and the headpiece. Let's see how it looks together. 